Hi, Cecilia. This is Sarah from Flourish, and I am here to critique your shop, Pure Poetry Cosmetics. Kind of excited, not going to lie. I love all of your uh, uh, posts and products that I see, so I kind of can't wait to get through your shop and see all that you make. So it looks like you've been on Etsy for a long time, since 2010. Um, I actually started on Etsy around 2008, 2009. Um, it's so changed so much since then, hasn't it? It's been crazy. Um, you have 100 sales, which I'm not sure if you perhaps maybe opened a seller's account and then only used it as a buyer um, and maybe didn't get your items on until later. Or perhaps you just haven't um, been really working it that much. Because um, 100 sales in six years is not obviously really great. So we're going to look everything over and kind of get an idea um, about what you sell and, and if there's any kind of um, tips that I can give you or maybe recommend some changes that you can make um, to start to increase your sales and um, kind of become more of a profitable business. So um, let's go ahead and start with branding. Now, you are in a special category. You're in cosmetics. You create bath and body products, right? And although that is so cool and everyone's all into handmade and organic and all that kind of stuff, the minute you tell somebody that you made something by hand in your home or in your studio and it has to do with something that they're putting it on their skin or on their face or in their bath, um, they all of a sudden get real uh, skittish, right? And that's just because, um, you know, there's things like the FDA here and, and um, you know, warnings about different bacteria and, and uh, uh, bad um, uh, chemicals that can harm you and, or make you sick. So it's, it's kind of hard because you have this great, great talent where you can make something wonderful and you know honestly the stuff that you buy in the store in the bottle is probably way worse uh, but you do have that kind of um, uh, hole to jump over uh, so how can you do that how can you reach across doubt and assure your customers that your products are fine products they're quality products they're they're made with care, with the finest of ingredients, um, in the cleanest um, lab or whatever, uh, whatever space you use. Um, so the way that you're going to do that is with impeccable, impeccable branding. Because see, the, the consumers, they want, it's not that they want to be lied to. Well, they do want to be lied to, but it's not that. It's they... They need to have this false sense of security, right? If you look like a professional company and you're branded as a professional company and your photos are beautiful as a professional company, then we are safe to assume that your products are clean and healthy and uh, tip top, right? It's silly, but it's the truth. If your branding is kind of messy and your packaging is kind of frumpy and your pictures are kind of, eh, you know, no one's going to buy from you. It's just the way that it is. So I want you to really think about that. When, when I'm thinking about a bath and body or a cosmetic company, I want to think about clean, clean cleanliness, right? Clean, um, fragrant, um, smooth, soft. Think of all the words that come through your mind when you're thinking of cosmetics or a luxury bath and body. Um, right here you have this dark blue um, water drop, looks like, and font. It's messy. It kind of looks like anybody could have done that in Canva or in Photoshop or in Paint or in Word even. Um, it definitely does not come across as very professional. I like the name Pure Poetry Cosmetics, a beautiful name. I don't think you need to rebrand your name, but I definitely think you need to either hire a graphic designer or design one yourself on Canva. 
Um, you want branding that, that really attracts your target audience. So let's look at some Bath & Body, other Bath & Body sellers. Now we're going to use Etsy as an example. And now most of Etsy sellers that make Bath & Body, they have horrible pictures and horrible branding. But I'm going to try to find one that has a really good example to kind of show you what I mean. might have uh, been a good idea to put an exact product name in there. I need a nap. Okay, so let's look at Spa Girl Soaps. See what she has going on. Well, she doesn't have any branding. Her pictures are terrible. That one was a good one. All right. <clears throat> So there's a reason why I want you to have amazing branding. This is not good either. Because as you can see, the majority of Etsy sellers do not have good branding. They don't have good branding. They don't have good photos. They don't have, you know, any of that knowledge at all. So that's why we teach you in Flourish to do these things. Because if we can teach you to do these things and be better, then all of these pictures that you see on Etsy, then you're, you're pretty much guaranteed to have those sales, right? All right, let's go to, um, let's see if I can find a better Nope. I don't want to take all your time. All right, here's one. Full banner. They have artists in bath and body. Nice clean lines. They have the natural leaf here, which gives it that kind of natural holistic uh, feeling. They have some nice graphics here. So that, you know, you would trust that company more so than you would trust some of these people that don't have any branding or their branding, you know, is really rough. Good pictures, not, not very good branding. Kind of cool, it's showing you, showing them pouring their soap. Still doesn't have a uh, solid branding though. Um, let's look up Mary Ann's shop, Organic Beauty Junkie. She is in the middle of rebranding. She doesn't have her new branding up either. Well, this is not, not doing so good here. Let's see if I can find. I want to find you a really good example. I might have to just go to Google. All right, well, uh, yeah, let's just go to Google real quick. I'll show you what I mean. So when you think of, uh, you think of uh, nice skin care, what do you think of, you know, or if you think of popular skin care, you got Aveeno, right? So let's look at Aveeno and look at their branding. 
They got the green, the brown, simple font, Aveeno Naturals. Um, here you'll see there's the, there's the like um, wheat here, um, edamame here, or soy, I guess that would be. Um, that's their branding, okay? Who else, like, um, what else would you think of Oil of Olay? And I know our, these are not so great, but uh, at least it kind of shows you their branding. It's very clean. It's very, this is black and white. It's very clean. It's very simple. Um, what about Burt's Bees? Burt's Bees. Um, what about Lush? That would probably be better than... Let's look if we can find Lush. Hand, handmade Cosmetics. Uh, let's see if we can find some really cool... <laughs> bath bombs. You do bath bombs, right? Bath bombs. Okay, <clears throat> that's not a really good example either. All right, great pictures. Do you see that Firebird soaps? Look at these pictures. Doesn't that make you just want the soap like crazy? Those pictures. Person has product photography down on that part. <laughs> okay. Well, sorry I took so long. I'm, I'm just trying to show you the feeling that you're trying to get. I need to really have a list of amazing shop examples that I can use during these critiques. It would be very helpful to me. I, I know some, but then I always forget to, to keep looking, up, looking them up. So basically, this is not what you want. You want something that is more, if, you, if, you, if you're into the, all the colorful kind of exciting things that you're making, um, then maybe you want something a little more loud and not so subdued, but you want something that looks really professional and clean, um, something that is a good selling point, something that's going to attract people to your shop. All right, you have this all pretty much right. The gift sets should go above lip balms. See all that is? These look pretty good, though. I would swap these two around. You got over 50 items, which is fantastic. Great job on that. Let's go to your about section. Tools, materials, workspace. So again, think about what people are going to want to be reassured on. You want to show nice, clean pics, pics of your space, of your materials, of your tools. You want them to be nice, light, bright, um, produce a really good feeling. You don't want it to seem like it's unclean or if it's or it's done in a dirty basement or anything like that. So it's important that you use your photographs to showcase um, and, and assure your customers that they're getting, oh my goodness, that they're getting a quality product and a safe product. Um, you only have a sentence or two here. You want to have a good three paragraphs here. This should be pictures of you in here also. There's five slideshow. Uh, it's a slideshow of five pictures that go across. So show pictures of you, um, perhaps making your items, uh, maybe a picture of you and your spouse or you and your family or you and your pets. You want to write two to three paragraphs telling people what inspires you. What are you passionate about? What 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 got you into doing this in the first place? Why do you do it? And who do you do it for? Kind of a thing, okay? You need to uh, definitely fill that out. That's important. And having a full about page really will help boost your ranking on Etsy as well. That's something that they changed um, when they messed around with the algorithm last year. Um, they really wanted people to uh, utilize that page. All right, let's go up here and look at your main shop. We're going to talk about your prices and your photos, and then we'll talk about SEO. All right, you do not want to photograph your photos on a black background. Again, think clean, fresh. Think of like a spa. You know, you want to create that kind of feeling. You want your customer to imagine, you know, getting into a nice bubble bath and um, or a nice hot bath and um, maybe have some nice music playing and 
you know, they're going to use their bath bombs or whatever it is. You don't want to just have a picture of a bath bomb like on a black surface. It just doesn't look good. It doesn't look professional and it would keep people from buying from you. Um, and again, we'll look for pictures. See if I can find some good pictures of bath bombs. <clears throat> Remember, light and bright. You want to think clean and refreshing. This is a great picture here of just all the bath bombs kind of together. It's funny Pokemon. <laughs> Terrible for licensing, but uh, it's so it's it's funny. This would look cool if they would have cropped it here because you can see the wood vinyl kind of rolling up the wall. This is awesome here, showing it in like a, a dish, like it's an ice cream scoop. Light and bright. This is nice, light and bright here. Pink parchment soaps. Let's see. Eh, some of their stuff's kind of dull. Computer's going slow. Now, you might think I'm spending a lot of time on this, but it's so, so, so important. I mean, this is the difference between you making 100 sales in eight years or six years versus you making 2,000 sales in a year. That is how much of a difference it can be having good pictures it really makes a difference that's a good picture so it's very light and bright so here we go Nur organics handcrafted no animal testing skincare spa beauty looks more professional look at her pictures all light and bright that would make me feel like I could trust this company more way more than I would trust your company you see, and that's the thing with online shopping is that they're comparing you and everybody else together. And they're going to they're going to go by whatever shop looks best to them. All right. So definitely um, practice rephotographing your items for sure. Um, all of them need to be rephotographed, including your nail polish. If you're doing nail polish. Um, the big thing is to actually show the polish on your nails. Uh, that's a good picture if you can get somebody with nice nails to do that. Um, see if I can find just one of the bottle without the nails. Looks like most people are using it with the nails. But if you didn't want to do that, you don't have to. You just want to photograph the bottles really nice in a light and bright area. This is cuts them off, so this isn't really good, but the lighting is good. All right, so I mean, again, I don't want to spend all day talking about this. I know we're already on 18 minutes, but I just, I, I want you to know how important it is to have solid, this is a good one here, just plain white background on this one. Um, but see, it looks more professional, doesn't it? Versus somebody like this. So it's super important. This is even cute here. It's a good idea too, shower favors. So I want you to keep that in mind. You know, really focus in on the product photography event and flourish um, and the branding event. I really think that's where your, your issues are. Pricing, you need to price in the 99 or the 95 cent price point. So this should be $5.99, this should be $1.99, this should be $3.99 or $4.99 if you want to mark them up. Oh my gosh, my phone is blowing up. Uh, $7.99, you don't want whole prices. Um, more people click on this, more people will buy this at $9.99 than they will $10. It's just the way that it works. There's been thousands of studies done. It's called psychology pricing. Um, it's important that you price on the $0.99 or $0.95 cent price point.
So I would definitely tweak that. Now let's look at, let's just look at a basic bath bomb set. Let's look at this. Okay, you have rose bath bombs, floral bath bombs, luxury bath bombs, vegan bath bombs, naked bath bombs, made to order, made fresh, ready to ship. All right, let's see how many people are looking for rose bath bombs. Well, there we go, rose bath bomb. That is a popular search term, rose bath bomb. Um, how many are you selling here? Is it just one or is it three? One or three. So I would change, I would take out the S and I would just have rose bath bomb, space dash space, bath bomb set or bath bombs. <clears throat> You have floral bath bomb. Nobody's searching on for that, so I would probably, that's a waste of a tag. Luxury bath bombs. No one's looking for that either. How about vegan bath bomb? Vegan bath bomb is, that's a popular search term, one that's being used. Let's try naked bath bombs. Nope. Made to order, you don't need to put that in there. Made fresh, you don't need to put that in there. And ready to ship, that's all waste of tags. So what you want to do is you want to think bath and body. Um, bath and body is a good uh, keyword phrase in there. You want to have maybe a um, spa gift. Right? For people wanting to put together a spa basket, maybe a spa gift. Um, bath bomb set. Christmas gifts for her. Maybe Christmas gifts for her. Maybe stocking stuffer, unique stocking stuffer. Maybe make copy this listing, make a listing of three, and do it for a certain price for a stocking stuffer. Maybe put them in a special bag. Um, I want skin care. Could use some of those. I put bath salts in um, maybe on your tags. Bubble bath bomb. Okay, bubble bath bar. Make sure that you're really researching your keywords and your keyword phrases. Make sure that they're ones that are being used, that people are using to find you. I would assume that your views are not super duper high. Um, I think that your your SEO needs to definitely be reworked. You're doing it in the right format. I mean, you're filling in all 144 characters. You're using space dash space, and you're using some decent words. You just have to really research them and the, the phrases and how they're put together to make sure that they are actual phrases people are using to find your products. You want a, a paragraph here in the very front. This should be your digital salesperson. Your first paragraph, it should really set the tone, tell the story. Um, why might somebody want to use this? You know, imagine yourself taking a bubble bath with a glass of wine and blah, 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 blah. Whatever it is, some kind of sales copy uh, that sounds really, really good. And then the second paragraph needs to be the specs. You know, like how big is it? And what's it made out of? You know, what are the materials? That kind of stuff. Third paragraph really should be you thanking them for stopping by your shop. And then say, if you'd like to see our other bath product, click here. Or our other bath bombs, click here. Include the link to the section of your shop that has the other bath bombs. And that creates interlinking, which also strengthens your SEO. All right, so that's really it. I think your issue, you, you have to tweak a lot, of, a lot of the things. You know, I teach from the five pillars, which is branding, product photography, SEO, copy and pricing. Or pricing and copy. Flip that. Uh, um, I think your branding needs to be redone. I think it needs to attract people that would want to buy these types of things from you. 
I think that your um, product photography definitely needs to be redone um, completely. Your SEO, you're close, but you do need to, to do some more research and tweak some keywords here and there. Um, your copy definitely needs to be updated and your pricing needs to be tweaked. So, I mean, you have a lot of work to do. You do on your shop, but you know, you make really cool stuff, very pretty stuff. I can see you being a very successful shop owner. You just have to put in the work. Um, so I would definitely go through my, uh, five pillars of e-commerce that are in the files. Um, perhaps the Etsy bootcamp as well, just to maybe get a refresher on um, how to set up a proper Etsy shop um, and then just start working away. Pick one thing like say branding and then work on it until it's done then move on to the next thing. No reason to get overwhelmed. It's not something you can do in a night but it is something that if you can um, focus on all those areas and slowly start to improve them you will significantly see an increase in your sales and your income. All right, so thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can, of course, message me on Facebook or you can tag me on the wall. I'm always here and happy to help. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.